Hi, my name is Chris Rakakis, and I'm an Applied Mathematics instructor at MIT, and today what I'm going to be talking about is how you can automate the discovery of mechanistic models via something that we call universal differential equations. So the way to look at this is that traditional deep learning has the ability to learn everything from big data, but we know the downsides of that, right? So big data can cost billions, it might not be even be available, right? So think about getting uh, big data from a clinical trial that hasn't run yet, well, that's just not even possible, right? But you can't run a huge clinical trial without the scientific knowledge to know it's safe, right? So in a lot of cases, it's very difficult to get big data. And one of the other things that, that, that really stops everyone from using machine learning in pharmacology is that neural networks are not interpretable, right? They can't tell you anything about mechanism or how things work or why it's doing its prediction. Now, the way that we can try to get around this issue is that, you know, a lot of in a lot of cases of pharmacology, we use models, right? And scientific knowledge is essentially encapsulated into models, right? So, you know, all these models of biological processes or, or um, physiological processes, they capture thousands of experiments in every little detail of that model, right? So this is kind of the information that we use in pharmacology. But... The way that we're kind of going is what we call scientific machine learning, which is model-based data efficient machine learning, where it's essentially using both sources of knowledge. It's using, you know, the gigantic big data that's coming out of, you know, uh, high performance or next generation sequencing in biology. Um, and it's mixing that with the models that we know that we have, we've built up over the many years. And it's combining these two sources together. Right, so, so the question that I really want to solve here is how can we simultaneously use the knowledge of big data along with the models that we have to be able to improve our models? So how can you automate the discovery of scientific models using the data that comes in? This is the process or the, or the method that we call universal differential equations. And if you want to get more information on this, you can go see the preprint that describes this in full. So. The core to the way that this method works is something that we call the universal approximation theorem, or which is essentially that neural networks can get epsilon close to any Rn to Rm function. So if you have some function that has n inputs and m outputs, if you have a big enough neural network, it can act like that nonlinear function. Um, and so essentially what a, what a neural network lets you do is it lets you parameterize functions that you don't know with a finitely many a finite amount of parameters. And so what we're doing with universal differential equations is we're defining differential equations in part by universal approximators. And so what this does is it lets us use all of the known science that we have, use all of the numerical methods that we have, and just have neural networks fill in the details that we don't know, and then use that to be able to discover the parts of the models that we don't have uh, enough information on, but are well captured in data. So the way, best way to describe this is through running an example. So here is a demonstration of universal differential equations on a toy model that describes an epidemic, right? So here is an SEIR model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can use a partial model, partial data-based recovery to be able to discover the missing mechanisms of something and really return back to modeling. So given that a neural network can be a something that approximates functions and a ordinary differential equation is defined by you know a right hand side function that gives you the derivative one idea that you can have is just say u prime equals a neural network where this neural network defines the full derivative and thus defines the model right so you can do this and and you can train this this neural network such that it will learn to be the dynamical system um, on the data that you do so here everything i'm going to be showing is training from day zero to day 21 worth of data and then extrapolating forward in the future and you can see that if you leave everything to the neural network you generally do not capture enough information to extrapolate correctly right so this just doesn't have the right asymptotic behavior and so what we do is with universal differential equations is that we move to a model where we everything that we know, everything that is less uncertain, we specify in the model. 
So here, for example, is an SEIR model where there, there is a, you know, there is I, which is the people who are infected but not hospitalized, and there is D, which is the people who are uh, infected and hospitalized. And then R is the part, uh, are the people who've recovered. You know, you, you can put these parameters in there to get pretty good values if you, if you know the time and the time it takes for someone to recover from the disease and the percentage of the people who are get hospitalized versus not hospitalized, right? So there's, there's large parts Parts of this model which are fairly clear and, and you can write this down and so what, th what this model is what we've written down is essentially these are the parts of a epidemic model which are fairly clear that you know um, this percentage of people get uh, sent to the hospital this percentage of people are just infected this is the rate at which people recover in these different situations but the problem with a model of COVID-19 is how does exposure work right because that depends on whether people wear masks, whether people are social distancing. There's so many different factors. And so the, the term that would be the exposure that changes people from susceptible to exposed is something that we don't necessarily know. So what we do in this universal differential equation case is we replace it with a neural network. And then uh, what this does in the background it, during the training process is it learns to be the missing part of the model. And then, um, and then you learn what that, that missing term in the model is. And now you have a, a full differential equation where the, the exposure is driven by what you've learned from data. And so here we train it from zero to 21 days worth of data. And we show that we can extrapolate pretty well up to 40 days of data, you know, using what we've learned about exposure in, in that time period. So now this isn't fully, you know, it's, it's getting there. It's getting to interpretable, but it's not all the way there yet. So what we have to do on top of this is that we do this process, which is called CINDY, uh, sparse identification of dynamical systems, where you can uh, you can put your data into some basis, and you can do a sparse regression to be able to try to directly identify what the what the symbolic terms are that define your model. Um, it turns out to do automated discovery of the entire model. That is something that can require a, bu a bunch of data. But what we can do is we can do the same process specifically on the, the neural networks that have defined these missing parts of our model. And it turns out to work pretty well. And so we do that same process where we train the neural network in the model, and then we sparse identify. And then it says, this is the, this is the, the mechanistic terms that should have gone into this part of the model. And notice it actually makes a hypothesis as well because it says that D, the percentage of people who are hospitalized, it says that they do not have an effect on the exposure term. And so, you know, it made it, it's showing you what the mechanisms are, it's generating hypotheses. And when we sparsify it down, we get very good extrapolation behavior because now it follows, you know, the 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 core asymptotic properties that we would expect from, from a sparse, you know, mechanistic model. And so this is the machine learning augmented scientific modeling approach where we build models, we, we showcase what has uncertainty, we replace those uncertain terms or areas with neural networks, and we use that to be able to recover the parts of the model that we didn't know before and end up at it with a new um, data-driven uh, mechanistic model that predicts what mechanisms we should have been putting in there. And so we've shown this on many different um, uh, dynamical behaviors. This is a very nice example where we take a log Volterra equation where we, we only assume that we know the linear terms. So, you know, you can kind of think about it as we kind of assume a compartmental model and then we just kind of ask, can you just learn the rest of the behavior? And, and the neural network learns the rest of the behavior from data that is just trained from zero to three days, and then it's told to extrapolate in the future. And you can see that the line goes through the data points. It figures out that the future will be cyclic because it's actually learned the correct mechanisms. And if you know the mechanisms, then from that mechanism, you can predict the cyclic behavior. And so this is the kind of behavior you know, that you wouldn't expect from a neural network, but because we're learning mechanisms, it is able to capture these properties. And this is what we're then doing in the, in the QSP space, where here we're actually showcasing automated model discovery in the context of stochastic differential equations, where again, we're embedding neural networks to capture the portions with uncertainty, and then learning functional forms from data to, to capture the mechanisms that we didn't know about, and then learning what kinds of interactions should be occurring given the, what the data says, so that way we can go back to the lab and verify what, what the neural network is telling us, right? Because it's, it's predicting mechanisms, so every single term of the model that it predicts, we should go back and check.
And so this is what we've automated as the SciML open source organization. And so this whole this whole workflow for how to do high performance GPU accelerated universal differential equations for automatically discovering models, all of this is open source code that you can just pick up and go. Um, and there's a bunch of tutorials, I think like 30 tutorials showing it in many different contexts. So thank you very much. Um, th this was a short talk, but hopefully it gets you interested in using our tools for automated model discovery in the context of quantitative systems pharmacology, and you can watch all the different videos on this. So we have a four hour video that is a tutorial deep dive into using the tools to do exactly some of these, um, these exercises that were shown. And also, um, since scientific machine learning is in a pretty new field itself, um, I'm running a graduate course at MIT where all of the materials are online. So check out 18337 Parallel Computing and Scientific Machine Learning. If you're interested in more in doing high performance um, model solving, and um, and automatically discovering models from data with scientific machine learning. So thank you very much.